Shura is... I mean, I, I don't think he got dehyped or anything from this chapter. I, I think he's still fine. All it really was was narrow, like, having a higher level of, um, like, of more battle tact and, like, schemes rather than, you know, whereas, like, Shura... Sure is definitely more, I'd say, of a fighter. And power level-wise, we're not talking about power level-wise, but I'd say more of, like, an actual combat. I would give my money on Sure, because so far all Nero's really done is throw dice around. And I wouldn't even say that. It seems like the dice kind of do their own thing and then teleport with Wormhole, which is pretty cool. I, I, I am a little sad because it looks like this This is, might be the, the, the whole rug being pulled out from under my hopes of Shiki or Sure getting a Wormhole. As like in their abilities because like with gravity and stuff i know a lot of people are banking more for like black hole because you know black hole is more like hacks op but with with shiki i've talked about more a lot that with his whole style of combat he's way more he's way more maneuverable and way more about the just, just exactly how he approaches his opponents and how exactly he can just move around the entire battlefield in a full like uh, all pretty much all areas like all aerial like set up with this gravity manipulation whereas like natsu is way more of like a tanky brawler and haru is more like a variety type swordsman you know with all his different combo blades whereas shiki i, I think a wormhole would have just been so much better more beneficial on shiki if he can just open portals and jump from place to place yeah, like, you could have it, like, start out pretty regular, and then maybe eventually he could just kind of open wormholes and go to other planets. Like, just without the ship. Not from, like, needing the ship of, like, its combat size, or its combat-wise and all of its utility and stuff, but more of just fast travel. I think that'd be really cool, because it would give Shiki, like, a, just a a little bit bonus of, of just general use instead of, like, where a... Oh, a black hole is, is pretty much you're just using that offensively. And there there are some degrees where it can be used defensively. But I think a wormhole would have been cooler. Regardless of which, I think it's cool. Uh, narrow, it's, it seems like it's not that crazy of an ether gear in, in reality, I would guess. Because he's really just doing the transport stuff. But at the same time, that that's a really good for him specifically. Because with his whole emperor dice and like the size of his cosmos his empire him being able to move around anything that he wants at any point is super useful it is as i've been mentioning like it it pretty much puts him as like a guy controlling the pieces on a game board and i think that that pretty much fits narrow really well but uh shiki and shura their fight is continuing uh it was getting pretty uh pretty brutal so this this though is like what i've been wanting for shiki i've been really wanting shiki to get a fight where he's being pushed like, he's really being pushed, and this is going to be a fight where he barely pulls out by the skin of his teeth. Because with, uh, with Dragon Joe, I don't really count Dragon Joe, because Dragon Joe, like, he, he had his, his first power-up form, and, like, you know, cross shown and stuff. Like, that's, that's more about, like, when you get it, you gotta flex on some guys. But, like, when you look at people like Orc, or you look at, like, the, the Spider Dude, or you look at the Kurenai with her Dragoon Mech, Shiki hasn't had a lot of, like, big crazy fights in terms of, like, his actual amount of effort. The Dragon Joe one is a little bit different because, like, that was, like I said, more of, like, a power upgrade kind of thing. Whereas, like, here he's actually fighting Shura to, ev like, every ounce that he, he, he potentially has. And Shura, I don't know why people don't like Shura's overdrive. Like, it looks a little weird, I get that. But he looks so cool in this chapter when, like, Mishima is drawing him in some of the more dynamic panels with, like, his hair kind of like going around way more kind of like spike tipped and just looking beastly as he's moving and like kicking shiki through walls and just like laying in on him and shiki's not like she's not just like getting fully beat up like he's rebounding getting punches onto shura as well and until we start to see some of shura's techniques he uses like this heavy rain where he like gravity increases some debris that just makes like high speed uh pretty much projectiles just you know rain down on him then he puts up like a big boulder. I, I would guess it'd be probably more concrete in this case instead of rock just based off of where they're at. Probably not a lot of rocks that's just sitting around in there. Uh, it, you know, with, within their whole uh, futuristic planet base. I mean, there's definitely stone deep down, but I feel like if it, this is from the debris, so what makes the most sense is that he's pulling up uh, concrete or something like that. 
Uh, but he like condenses it down. Unless it's marble. I don't know. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but he condenses it down, turns it into a spear, and chucks it right at Shiki. Pierces right through his, uh, his torso. And he's in, obviously in some pain because Shiki, like I said, Shiki isn't the same level of durability. I wouldn't even say Haru is the same level of durability as someone like Natsu. Because like, I just I just thought it was a little funny because people were like, you know, whenever like, new events happen people always want to try and like, clown on the other fandom i don't know what it is between like the eden zero and fairy tale fandom that they want to like clash all the time i'm personally not in that but i i think it was a little funny when people were like bring up something about like this with like shiki and then like versus natsu but it's like natsu took all of those like uh all of those wood spikes from alderaan off of his whole body and then got back up and was still fighting like moments later it's just a different degree. Shiki is way more... Not talking about, like, stats and stuff, because obviously Natsu is way further progressed in his story and, like, power level stuff than Shiki is. But just looking at the base root of their abilities, Shiki is way more of a maneuverable fight. He's way more of a flexible fighter in how he uses it. Because, like, Haru has all his swords. It's all about, like, him com uh, doing, like, combo stuff, setting up his different swords and, like, how each sword can do can be more beneficial in certain scenarios. Whereas Natsu's more of like a, you know, he's like a brawler, like fighter, he's like a tank, pretty much. Uh, whereas, it, like if you were to compare it, like Shiki would be kind of almost like a rogue or like a thief kind of thing, just by like the way he moves. And he's just, he's all about, he's all about how he can pretty much just use everywhere he's at as like his terrain when he's doing stuff. And like he primarily, will like throw punches and stuff but obviously stuff like what he's got like his gravity shot and whatever gravity center like, like any of his attacks that are way more ranged like they he has more ranged attacks than like natsu and haru for sure and then when you look at that and then you look at really where his abilities all kind of like mainly are set as like i said the maneuverability and stuff so him not having nearly as much of a tolerance for like deep pain as well as like a durable body makes sense because it's not the way that his whole setup is but let me get to Rebecca. I actually got really confused at this point. Like, there was, um, I think it's because, um, I was looking at, like, the black outline of, like, the, where I was reading the chapter. And so I was thinking of it for some reason, like, it was a flashback chapter. Because, like, uh, the, like Rebecca gets the all-link system. There's a bunch of random guards, uh, show up. She's, like, shooting them. And then they start just dying because Shura shows up. Shura just starts crushing them, like, you know, killing random fodder. And he, like, says that Shiki is dead. I was, like, fully expecting this to be, like, Rebecca, you know, uses her cat leaper and reverses time or something. Because sure is, like, going up to press the all-link and, like, he's, like, pretty much saying that he's he's won this. He's going to blow up the temple and take out Ziki and Nero in the process. That's when Nero ends up coming onto the screen and saying, like, you know, this isn't a victory for you. It's only victory for me. Ren, and shows him Ziki's, like, pulled off head. Now... This guy's a machine. You gotta keep in mind, Ziggy is a machine, and he's like the king of machines. So, Nero should have taken this with a lot more. Like, the scene is way more difficult than really pulling the head off of a robot. It was, like, he's crazy if he didn't think he wouldn't be extremely advanced, extremely set, especially around combat. Like, he's not like some random helping robot. Like, he is a he, he is a very powerful robot king. He should you should immediately assume. This guy is is a like he's gonna have a lot of tricks up his sleeve. He's gonna have a lot of dangerous uh, like perks and alterations to his setup. But and then he's like says that with his uh, ether gear wormhole, he took all of the uh, antimatter bombs and put them on Nero sixty six. So he's like saying, "We'll just go ahead and detonate it then, and sure if you're so sure." And then he's just like, you know, whatever, I'll, I will do it. You're not going to beat me. And he goes to try and activate it anyway. That's when Shiki comes in and just gives like a heavy knee right to Shura. And it's like, you know, it's like, you know, our fight isn't over. And you get pretty much the same thing from Ziggy because Nero's standing there. And then a hand goes right through his chest. And that's when uh, Ziggy's pretty much saying the same thing. You know, our fight as an ended Nero. And at, at the same time, when he's like, when he... I, I, I'm fully expecting him in the next chapter to be like, do you really think that that was going to kill me? Like, it's as simple as that. As his body looks fine, it looks it looks legitimately like Nero did the damage. Like, it was pretty much where it left off in the previous chapter. But Nero just took a bunch of, like, pretty much just took an opportunity to, like, jump on him and, like, rip his head off or something. I don't know. Because outside of that, like, he looks fine. I, I will say I don't really like, this is a small piece, I don't really like Nero's outfit without his big emperor robes. I really like this idea of this 
big aquatic fish alien dude with like these weird dice that tell him what to do and then uh, attack for him. And he's just teleporting around and doing like different attacks. But he's more of like almost like a wizard rather than like a fighter. I just think that would have been cool. But anyway, um, this is a solid chapter. I, I really liked it. I thought the 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 bloody action of this match was definitely uh, much needed for Shiki. It was cool seeing Shiki in this uh, situation where he's really putting in a lot of effort. Um, the only thing I will uh, say uh, last minute is about Shiki's eye. I don't want it to get fixed fully. I'm fine if he has like a, an eye patch like Elsie or if he's got some form of eye cover, but. Uh, or, or he just gets a cybernetic eye. What I don't want him to him just to get his eye fixed, just because it was it's like a pretty serious uh, whole setup that he's got, and it's not it's not like um, like the avenues aren't the same. And again, it's easy just to compare it because you know fairy tale is directly Majima adjacent. It's like if you were to do that to somebody in fairy tale, it's like there are ways. Like you could have a character just get a fake eye, or you could have them. Um, you know, you know, something altered throughout their setup to give them a new eye, or just not to have a new eye. Or you could just heal it, but it's like, okay, well, if it's just heal, then it's fixer healing, you're gonna assume it's gonna be pretty much the same. Whereas, with Shiki, I, I feel like with, you know, the sci-fi stuff, the better avenue would be to give him a robotic eye, give him something mechanical. And maybe that's gonna be the thing with Shiki, and I was talking about this earlier, I had a short stream, is like, maybe Mishima's plan, and especially making Shiki so emotional, is to make it so it's like as he's progressing and maybe gains more, you know gains robotic parts to him he becomes less human over time more robotic i don't know either way uh comment below thumbs up the video befriend the like button subscribe and check out my other videos but that appreciate it. he's already subscribed and thank you all for listening bye